The first game on the SEC slate is in the books, and those Georgia Bulldogs are 3-0. and So we're going to take just a second and put that to bed. My final thoughts around that game look something like this. The dogs showed us that they had some resiliency about them, they, that they could go in at halftime down 14-3. to Oh, my God! Pull themselves together, come back out, and take care of business. Now, the bottom line is they actually had to overcome quite a lot here. You had the weather going on. The South Carolina team came out fast. And they were a pretty good football team led by a really good quarterback. But not only were they down at the half, they lost their starting tackle, Amarius Mims, had to replace him. And they also had at least two glaring special teams miscues with the missed field goals. Now, usually when you miss one field goal, that's a pretty good indicator that you're going to lose that game. When you miss two or have another special teams blunder like that, the odds are really stacked against you. But this group of dogs held everything together, got their mind right, started to execute better, and at the end of the day, got that first win in league play. Now, there were a few things that stood out to me, like the new clock rules. Now, I know Coach has been asked about this, about the number of plays this year versus last year. Earlier in the season, he had said it would have, we, re- we, re- we really wouldn't know until we got into conference play what that would look like. And after one week of conference play, the difference really only turned out to be about six plays a game, which would be about three plays per team. But what they haven't measured is the number of possessions. You would think that those numbers would correlate, so you wouldn't necessarily see fewer possessions. But what we have seen so far looks and feels like fewer possessions, which means that every possession is at a premium, right? It means you cannot go out there and shoot yourselves in the foot. And if you possess the ball and drive it the length of the field, you have to cash that in, preferably with touchdowns instead of field goals. This also puts a priority on the defensive side of the ball. You have to get stops. The more stops you get, the more turnovers you get, the more opportunities you're going to give your offense to be successful. So that's something that's really jumped out to me so far. As far as how the game's actually being played and how the dogs are doing, um, in the game against South Carolina, here's what I come away with. As always, it's about players, not plays. It comes down to execution. The little things can make a huge difference. It's very simple. Look at the first half versus the second half. The big difference, execution. Across the board, especially along the lines of scrimmage. In the first half, especially before Mims went out of the game, the middle of the line looked a little leaky. Trust kicked out to tackle to replace Mims. Fairchild came in and played a little guard. The line looked different. I'm not saying this is going to be your offensive line moving forward. They're going to put together the best five uh, as we move in through the season based on who's available due to injury and things like that. But at the end of the day, what really, really sticks out to me is is execution and the players you have available to run the scheme you're trying to run. That's what it comes down to. Now, if I take a little bit deeper look at it, there are a few things I really would like to see, though. I would like to see... People are worried about Brock Bowers not getting enough touches or enough targets. Brock's being targeted. The thing is, he's being used in a different way. Is that because of scheme, or is it just because we're working our way into what the offense is ultimately going to become? Mostly, I would tend to lean towards the latter. Currently, Brock is being targeted inside like three to four yards of the line of scrimmage. However, in the second half, we saw where the shots for Brock were deeper down the field on end cuts and things like that. So they're trying to get Brock the ball. He sort of has a gravitational pull to him as far as where the defense is going to go. But the way he's going to be most effective is down the field. One of the things I think that's going to lead us to that is as this run game continues to improve and hopefully get a little bit more healthy, the dogs are going to be able to incorporate more of a true play-action look which is going to bring those linebackers up for a beat, maybe the safety up for a beat, give Brock that opportunity to get loose, and then 15 can find 19 a little bit further down the field. Once that happens, Katie bar the door, look out. The dogs are going to be throwing the ball down the field a little bit more. On Beck in particular, it feels like he is rushing himself. And that could be because uh, that's what he practices against every day right? He has to be quicker in what he does against the defense he faces every day at practice because the athletes are so much better. But that's bleeding into the game. 
So what I've seen in Brock is that his fakes on his play actions, his fake tosses, his movements inside the pocket, his reads on his progressions seem to be just a beat too quick. What I'd like to see is him take a breath, let the play breathe and develop just a little bit, hit the top of his drop a half a beat later, let those routes develop, and then put the ball on them. Because one thing Brock or Beck has shown us so far is that he is a very accurate passer down the field. Once you adjust his percentages out, he's somewhere over 80% as far as his accuracy. So Beck is doing fine. The thing is, he just seems to be rushing him stuff. I want to see him climb in the pocket like he did on the big throw to Rara, as opposed to dancing or scooting out to the edges when there's no real pressure forcing him that way. Step up into the pocket, make a good read, make the throws. We know you're capable of making. That's going to make this offense more efficient. Something that I think has to be pointed out too is how much work has been done over the first three games of the season on the perimeter by the wide receivers in the run game, how hard they've been working to become better at blocking in space. This week was a prime example of that. Repeatedly, we saw Arian Smith and Rara Thomas get out there on the edge, make blocks to spring Dominic Lovett for nice gains, first down pickups, and including that one that put them down inside the five yard line. Those two guys have worked really, really hard out there on the perimeter, along with CJ Smith and the other wide receivers, because they know it's important, and they know that if they want to get on the field, stay in the game, and have opportunities for the ball, they have to do that part of the game too. They've worked their butts off. It's starting to show. I think that's only going to become more apparent as we move deeper into the season. So there you go. I think the dogs are 3-0. and That's what the record says they are. I think they are forming. They are rounding into the offense and the type of team they're going to become. I was really, really excited to see what the defense did in the second half against South Carolina in full transparency. I thought we would see more of that in the first half, especially around the pressures that they were using, but they pulled it together, brought everything in, shut the Gamecocks out in the second half, got that W, and now they're 1-0 in league play, 3-0 and overall, and it's on to the next. Until next time, go dogs. I told them how about them fucking dogs. That's what I told them. <laughs>